ahead. I am Ashwarya. Let us start the bulletin with the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrives in Bhutan on a two-day state visit. It describes India-Bhutan partnership as an important pillar of government's neighbourhood first policy. Both sides to discuss security issues and cooperation on hydropower generation. To solidify India's relationship with Baltic nations, Vice President M. Venkia Naidu embarks on a six-day visit to Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, several agreements likely to be signed. Situation improving in Jammu and Kashmir, 2G mobile internet restored in five districts of Jammu, 50,000 phone lines are made operational in the valley, schools and educational institutions to reopen from 19th of August. Ending Kashmir's special status entirely internal matter with no external ramifications, says India after UNSC closed-door meet on Jammu and Kashmir. United Nations appreciates India's steps in Jammu and Kashmir. Entire UN Security Council, barring China, backs India at informal meeting on Jammu and Kashmir. And U.S. President Donald Trump asks Imran Khan to resolve tensions with India bilaterally, refuses to mediate between two countries over Kashmir. Pakistan's attempt to rake up Kashmir at the UNSC falls flat. The top story this afternoon, Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Bhutan on a two-day visit during which he will hold talks with the Bhutanese leaders to further deepen the bilateral ties. Bhutanese uh, Prime Minister Lote Shering uh, received Prime Minister Modi at the airport. PM Modi was accorded a guard of honour on his arrival. The top leadership of both countries are expected to ink 10 MOUs. The Prime Minister's visit marks India's five decades of hydropower cooperation with Bhutan. Our correspondent Akhilesh Suman brings us this report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will call on the Bhutanese King Jigme Khesar Namgyal Wangchuk and hold delegation level talks with his counterpart Lote Shering. Both sides will sign 10 new agreements and inaugurate five projects, including the rollout of the Rupee Card scheme. Prime Ministers Modi and Shering will jointly inaugurate the Ground Earth Station built by ISRO in Thimpu at a cost of about 7 crore rupees. The highlight of the visit will be the inauguration of the 720 megawatt Mangdechu Hydropower Project jointly developed by India and Bhutan. A power purchase agreement will also be signed during the visit. Formal inauguration of the Mangdechu Hydroelectric Power Project. 720 megawatts, four units, three of which have already been commissioned at a cost of about 5,012 crores. It is actually the, the most cost effective hydro project in South Asia. Uh, it's on 70% loan and 30% grant. And we will also be signing the, the Mangdechu Hydroelectric Power Project Power Purchase Agreement. Both countries will make efforts to increase collaboration in STEM learning that comprises science, technology, engineering and maths, besides exploring collaboration in new sectors like healthcare. Modi will also address students of the Royal University of Bhutan on Sunday. India is also providing 400 crore rupees for a trade support facility to encourage Bhutanese exporters. This is a special package that we intend to give Bhutan to encourage Bhutanese exporters to export more to India because our objective is to diversify the relationship from simply being based on hydropower cooperation to other areas uh, where we want to cooperate or collaborate with Bhutan. So this is a special focus and a special package being given in this five-year plan only as trade support uh, for companies and producers and manufacturers to, um, to incentivize them to export more to India. In a statement ahead of his departure, the Prime Minister said his visit to Bhutan reflects the importance that the government attaches to India's relations with its trusted friend and neighbour. 
The Prime Minister added that both countries enjoy excellent bilateral ties exemplified by extensive development partnership, mutually beneficial hydropower cooperation and strong trade and economic linkages. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is going to Bhutan at a time when there is a lot of churning in regional politics and Indo-Pacific politics is taking the center stage. It will be interesting to see that how far Bhutan can be accommodated and how Bhutan's importance and contribution can be got in Indo-Pacific region. Akhilesh Suman for Raj Sabha Television in Delhi. All right, uh, so uh, this is going to be a very significant visit of the Prime Minister to Bhutan. Remember, in 2014 as well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had gone to uh, visit uh, Bhutan after taking charge as the Prime Minister. And this is PM Modi's second visit to the Himalayan nation and first since his re-election as Prime Minister. And uh, in... Uh, in total, about 10 MOUs are slated to be signed between the two close neighbours in uh, fields like education, amongst others. And those were the visuals uh, of uh, early morning today where Prime Minister Narendra Modi reached Bhutan. He received a guard of honour and he is uh, on a two-day visit to the country. We saw Prime Minister Narendra Modi received by his Bhutanese counterpart, Dr. Lote Shering, and others on his arrival at uh, the Paro International Airport in Bhutan. Those visuals there, we saw a child presenting a bouquet to the Prime Minister as he stepped off the plane. And, uh, and after uh, reaching Bhutan, PM Modi also tweeted that he was extremely grateful to the Bhutanese Prime Minister for welcoming him at the airport and he called the uh, gesture of uh, the Bhutanese Prime Minister as deeply touching. This is PM Modi's second visit to the Himalayan nation and uh, earlier in his departure statement, the Prime Minister had also said that India-Bhutan partnership uh, forms an important pillar in uh, New Delhi's neighbourhood first policy and he also expressed confidence that uh, the two-day trip will promote the the. Uh, the time-tested ties really between the two countries. And PM Modi will begin his engagements. Uh, he will visit a monastery uh, in Bhutan. And he's also going to receive audiences uh, with the king of uh, Bhutan as well. All right, let's get you some other news now with a view to solidify India's relationship uh, with the Baltic nations. Vice President M. Venkia Naidu embarked on a six-day visit to Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia today. And the major focus of this visit will be to advance India's outreach to these uh, three Baltic nations that were once a part of the erstwhile Soviet Union and are now independent nations. Vice President Naidu will be in uh, Lithuania from 17th to 19th of August. He will be in Estonia on 20th and 21st of August and in between he'll be in Latvia on 19th and 20th of August. And efforts will be made to strengthen strategic ties uh, with the agreements related to technology that are likely to be signed. Now, these uh, three countries are really important for India's uh, strategic agenda. And ties with them affect our friendship with the European nations uh, positively. The Vice President will also unveil a bust of Mahatma Gandhi in Latvia and he will also meet the Indians living in all the three countries. He will also address the business forum meets during his visit. India and Baltic uh, countries have a historical uh, connect and uh, it is generally accepted that uh, there are common uh, linguistic uh, roots notwithstanding the uh, distance. Uh, this is uh, sensed a lot in uh, the Baltic countries. They feel that with Sanskrit and other aspects of Indian culture, there is a kind of uh, closeness which need to be nurtured and uh, taken forward. The cutting-edge technology and uh, innovation ecosystems of the Baltic countries uh, also complement uh, India's huge market and uh, appetite for these kind of uh, technologies.
They are supportive of uh, uh, this uh, India's uh, claim to a permanent uh, membership of UNSC. On terrorism also, I think they have been very, very uh, understanding and post Pulwama also they have been extremely responsive. So I think there is very common ground uh, with uh, these countries. But you're, you're also aware that they're a part of the larger European space as well. So when we work with these countries, we also get the opportunity to uh, work with these friends as, uh, you know, within the European space. On to news from Jammu and Kashmir now, where the state administration today restored mobile internet services in five districts of the Jammu region after days of restrictions following the abrogation of Article 370. Now, 2G mobile internet services have been restored in Jammu, in Rasi, in Samba, Katwa and Udhampur districts. And the police officials said that the high-speed 3G and 4G mobile internet services will now be restored after a fresh assessment of the situation. However, the services uh, continue to remain suspended in uh, districts like Poonch, Rajori, Kishtwa, Doda and Ramban. The net is starting, it is a very happy thing. Our business, our work, which is suffering from net money. It's a good thing. It seems to be normal to be normal. And the prosperity has increased. People who are coming out of the state are right. So the state will increase the visitor. Meanwhile, officials also say that more than 50,000 landline phone services have been made operational after services in 17 telephone exchanges of the Kashmir Valley were restored. The mobile internet services, remember, were snapped across the Jammu region on 4th of August. Jammu and Kashmir Principal Secretary Rohit Kansal said that the internet is being gradually restored to several parts of both Jammu as well as Kashmir and that schools and colleges in Kashmir will re reopen area-wise next week. No untoward incident reported so far. Public transport has started flying and we are getting encouraging reports of normal movement from a lot of rural areas. We are looking forward to opening of schools beginning with primary schools all over and as we mentioned yesterday there will be full functionality of government offices beginning Monday. And India on Friday said that the country's national position was and remains that matters related to Kashmir are entirely an internal matter. In a closed door meeting at the United Nations Security Council, the meeting was to discuss the New Delhi's move to end the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. The meeting was called after Pakistan, backed by its all-weather ally China, requested the closed consultations on the issue and briefing the media following the conclusion of the informal meeting. India's permanent representative to the United Nations, Syed Akbaruddin, reiterated that matters related to the abrogation of Article 370 are entirely an internal matter of India and these have no external ramifications. Sayed Akbaruddin said that the government is committed to gradually removing all the restrictions in Kashmir and that the government is undertaking steps towards normalcy. He also said that the recent decisions taken by India and its legislative bodies are intended to ensure that good governance is promoted and social economic development in enhanced for our people for Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Our national position was and remains that matters related to Article 370 of the Indian Constitution are entirely an internal matter of India. These have no external ramifications. The recent decisions taken by the government of India and our legislative bodies are intended to ensure that good governance is promoted, socio-economic development is enhanced for our people in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. You are aware this morning that the Chief Secretary 
of the state of, of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir announced a whole set of measures that the government is undertaking to move towards normalcy. We are gratified that the Security Council in its close consultations appreciated these efforts, acknowledged them, and indicated that this is the direction in which they would like the international community to move. And he further said that uh, India is uh, committed uh, to ensuring that the situation remains uh, calm and peaceful without naming Pakistan. Syed Akbaruddin said that there are some who are trying to project an alarmist approach to the situation in Kashmir, which is uh, far from the ground realities. He asserted that there are normal diplomatic ways so when countries deal with each other. We are committed to gradually restri uh, removing all restrictions. You are aware of the timetable for that. Let me also tell you, since the changes internal to India have not made any difference to our external orientation, India remains committed to ensure that the, that the situation there remains calm and peaceful. We are committed to all the agreements that we have signed on this issue. We note that there were some who tried to project an alarmist approach to the situation which is far from the ground realities. Of particular concern is that one state is using terminology of jihad against and promoting violence in India including by the leaders, friends, violence is no solution to the problems that all of us face. We are committed to and, are, and inconsistent with our previous position that all issues between India and Pakistan as well as India and any other country will be resolved bilaterally, peacefully and in a manner that behoves normal interstate relations between uh, countries. We are saddened that terrorism is being uh, fueled, language and incendiary talk of jihad is being uh, mentioned by people who should know better. All of you are understanding of the situation here. I do not need to tell you what was the outcome of the close consultations. You will yourself know about it. We stand ready to continue our efforts towards peaceful resolution of all issues in an atmosphere free of terror and violence. The UNSC uh, meeting's uh, outcome will not be a formal pronouncement as uh, the consultations are informal in nature. India and Pakistan did not attend the meeting, which was only open to the five permanent members and the ten non-permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. And U.S. President Donald Trump has also asked Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan to resolve tensions bilaterally on Kashmir with India. The phone conversation between Donald Trump and Imran Khan took place uh, before the closed-door uh, meeting of the United Nations Security Council in New York on the revocation of the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. And the White House read out of the call was issued after the meeting concluded at the UN headquarters. Deputy Press Secretary of the US said in a statement that Donald Trump conveyed the importance of India and Pakistan reducing tensions through bilateral dialogue regarding the situation in Jammu and Kashmir. And Vice President M. Venkia Naidu has said that the abrogation of Kashmir's special status is a major move towards uh, ensuring an inclusive India. In a newspaper article, Venkia Naidu wrote that a vast majority of people in the country feel that the abrogation is a welcome step. He added that it is being seen as a major step towards ensuring an inclusive India. 
Taking readers through history, the Vice President writes that in the past, instead of bringing people of Kashmir closer to the rest of the country, Article 370 has only widened the chasm. He added that uh, while Article 370 failed to benefit the people in a meaningful way, it was used by separatists to drive a wedge between those living in Jammu and Kashmir and the rest of the country. It was also used by a neighbouring country to spread terrorism. The Vice President reiterated that the abrogation of Article 370 is a national issue involving countries' safety, security, unity and equitable prosperity. And uh, the nine-day national tribal festival Adi Mohotsav will begin in Leh Ladakh from today. It will be inaugurated by Jammu and Kashmir Governor Satyapal Malik. And the theme of the festival is a celebration of the spirit of a tribal craft, culture and commerce. Tribal Affairs Ministry and Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation of India are jointly organizing this festival. Around 160 tribal artisans from over 20 states and union territories will showcase their traditional arts and handicrafts in the nine-day festival. And President Ramnath Kovind the commemorated the Golden Jubilee celebrations of Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Medical Sciences in Maharashtra today. Addressing the event, President Kovind said that uh, doctors have important role to play in shaping our society. The president also lauded Institute's village adoption scheme and said that it has helped to bridge the gap in the health services in rural and urban areas. Maharashtra Governor C. Vidyasagar Rao and Chief Minister Devendra Farnavis were also present at the occasion. As doctors and medical scholars, you have an important role to play in shaping our society and in ensuring the well-being of our people. You are a beacon of hope for many and millions. Your village adoption scheme where you look after rural families and continue your association with them throughout your stay in Sevagram have further instilled a high sense of service in you. These features of the education ecosystem at your institute present a template of value-based learning which many can emulate and follow. Your rural training and your community empowerment approach is helping us bridge the gap in health service in rural and urban areas. News from the national capital, former minister in the Arvind Kejriwal government and disqualified MLA Kapil Mishra, along with Ahmadmi Party's women's wing chief Richa Pandey today joined the BJP. The duo was welcomed by BJP National Lab. Vice President uh, Sham Jaju and Delhi Unit President uh, Manoj Tiwari at the party office in the national capital. Delhi Assembly Speaker, remember, had disqualified Mishra under the anti-defection law. Mishra, elected uh, from the Karawal Nagar seat, uh, has challenged his disqualification in the Delhi High Court. Monsoon update now. The death toll in the flood affected uh, states... Uh, rose to 241 on Friday, with seven more deaths reported from Kerala, as the flood waters receded from uh, several parts of the worst-hit state. Meanwhile, five uh, casualties uh, were reported from Rajasthan. So far, 111 people have died in rain-related incidents in Kerala, 17 in Madhya Pradesh, 54 in Maharashtra, 5 in Rajasthan, and one in Andhra Pradesh. The Med Department has issued a red alert warning for Jodhpur, Nagore and Pali in Rajasthan for the next 24 hours and the army has been asked to be vigilant. Over 4,000 people meanwhile have been moved to relief camps in Guntur and Krishna districts of Andhra Pradesh as the Krishna River is in spate causing floods and affecting normal life. 87 villages in the state have been affected by Krishna floods. However, Weather has improved in flood hit western Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh, allowing the authorities to speed up rescue and relief operations. And talking about other states, the Med Department has issued a red weather warning for several districts in Himachal Pradesh and also an orange warning for extremely heavy rainfall in the entire state over the weekend. 
Meanwhile, light rains in the national capital brought some respite for Delhiites from the humid weather. And the weatherman has forecast a generally cloudy sky with the possibility of a light to moderate rain and strong surface winds during the day today. And the death toll rose to 111 in Kerala, where the rescue teams are recovering more bodies from the landslide ravaged Malapuram and Vayanar districts. Now, these two districts uh, have been the worst hit in the second spell of rains since 8th of August. Chief Minister Pinnarai Vijayan has said that 31 persons were still missing and over 1.47 lakh people are in 891 relief camps that have been set up across the state. And according to the IMD bulletin, moderate rainfall with the wind speeds reaching 35 to 45 kilometers per hour is very likely to occur at one or two places in Malapuram, Iduki, Arnakulam, Trisur and Palakkar districts. On to some other news now, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has uh, approved setting up of a committee under the chairmanship of a Director General Acquisition to review the Defence uh, Procurement uh, Procedure 2016 and Defence Procurement Manual 2009. The committee will revise and align the procedures with the aim of ensuring a seamless flow from asset acquisition to life cycle support. The DPP 2016 and DPM 2009 have been due for revision. Aligning the procedures will ensure seamless flow from asset acquisition to life cycle support and also strengthen the Make in India initiative of the government. Apart from Director General Acquisition, 11 other members not below the rank of Joint Secretary are part of this high-level committee. The committee has been given six months to submit its recommendations. And that is the wrap on this edition of Midday News. Thanks so much for watching.